The Rashid carving is really a snapshot in time, that period in Egypt history when they went from royal rule to the military government. It's an interesting little gun. The Rashid carbine is really a moment in time gun. Uh, it was made in the 1950s in Egypt. You have to realize what was going on in Egypt after World War II. Uh, there was the uh, war with the state that would eventually become Israel, 47 to 49, and uh, the Egyptians essentially had their butts kicked. They were under the leadership then of King Farouk, uh, who was corpulent and frankly not a very good king. While King Farouk was still king, he set out to upgrade uh, Egypt's military capability and he had Swedish engineers come in and set up a factory uh, to make a rifle based on the Swedish Lungman rifle, really the first direct impingement rifle adopted by military power. The Lungman of course was in 6.5 but the rifle that the Egyptians adopted, uh, the Hakim, was in 8 millimeter, 792 Mauser. And why 792? Well, you have to realize Egypt used to be part of the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottoman Empire was a 792 Mauser country. They uh, had Mauser rifles dating back well into the 1890s. But with regime change comes other change, and when the army officers led by Colonel Nasser uh, booted King Farouk, uh, they drifted into a different sphere, into the Soviet sphere of influence. Well, now you have a country that uh, does not have cordial relations with places that make 8mm Mauser, and they have access to lots and lots of Soviet arms and equipment, uh, in particular the 762 by 39 cartridge. So what the Egyptians did was convert their production line for the Hakim into one for a new gun, and that new gun was known as the Rashid carbine, and it's spelled a couple of different ways. But the Rashid carbine uh, was essentially a simplified Hakim made in 762 by 39. The thing about the Rashid is if you, if you see one, you'll probably look at it and think, huh, an SKS or a CZ-52 or what is that? And you'll reach down and you'll, you'll find a gun that is pretty nice gun, pretty, pretty well made, uh, good machining, uh, sometimes very nice uh, wood stocks. Uh, but you're, you're going to probably be a little surprised at the price in that for a gun of its type the Rashid prices are probably going to be uh, uh, pretty 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 healthy because there just weren't that many of them made. Uh, some estimates put the manufacturer of those guns at only about 6,500 guns uh, that were actually finished as complete guns with others being finished later and then uh, being imported uh, to the United States by various importers. Now this had been made in, uh, in Egypt. It fired the same round as the, uh, as the SKS, the uh, 7.62 by 39 uh, millimeter round, same uh, cartridge that's used in the uh, Kalashnikov AK-47 pattern uh, rifles. But this Rashid, uh, had been made in very limited numbers. Only about eight or 9,000 of them had ever been made. So this was a, a relatively rare in terms of military arms. Uh, one holdover from the Hakim uh, is the gas regulator. Uh, it's a very small triangular stud up on top of the gas tube, and you can see it uh, through the handguard. And there are four settings uh, for the Rashid. There's zero. Uh, which allows no gas at all. And back then, grenade launching from rifles was a big thing. You know, there, there, there weren't law rockets yet. There weren't RPGs, really. So they thought, well, the way that we give an infantryman firepower is we give them rifle grenades. So you can cut the gas off all the way, uh, and then you can move through a succession of settings that allow more gas to enter uh, the tube, which, of course, uh, that gas impinges directly on the front of the bullet barrel. Now they borrowed a little bit from the SKS design in uh, uh, giving it a folding bayonet. The Rashid had a detachable box magazine as opposed to the SKS uh, a relatively fixed magazine. But in actuality, both of these 10-shot carbines uh, were really designed to be fed from stripper clips. The, uh, the procedure to remove a Rashid box magazine is fairly complicated, uh, fairly difficult, and it uh, was never issued with spare magazines. So actually des the design is to feed this uh, box magazine with the stripper clips. 
Now the Hakim uh, and Lejungman had a fairly complicated uh, system that varied from a lot of uh, the other semi-automatic rifles of that era in terms of uh, initially charging and uh, uh, then clearing rounds from the chamber and it involved uh, using the entire receiver cover, moving that back and forth on the frame to charge the chamber. The Rashid made a little bit of an improvement on that by adding a charging handle that could be pulled back that would uh, uh, charge the chamber without going to have uh, to have to go through the relatively complicated uh, maneuvers that were required on the Lejungman and the Hakim. This is something that uh, uh, is always going to be a rare military semi-automatic rifle. It's also a fun shooter, just like an SKS. So uh, if you see one of these at a gun show or in a, a second-hand gun shop, uh, take a look at it. Uh, you might be able to snap up a, a collector's bargain that uh, has some history to it. It's a little bit rare and also is a, uh, a fun shooting rifle.